Mm. Hi, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. <laughs> and welcome to our PQA tutorial. Um, we are making a roguelike. So on a previous episode, we went through a bunch of stuff here and we've hopefully make things more compact and save maybe a bunch of tokens. I'm not sure <laughs> if we ended up at a, you know, at a net positive or negative, I guess, in this case. Uh, but yeah, we saved a bunch of stuff, hopefully. And now uh, today we are moving on with some new features. So generally this game is kind of shaping up. Things are looking good. Um, we can like walk around now and, and uh, you know, there's like a, a line of sight and we have like some really smart enemies happening. Um, there is just like one more thing I want to be adding before we start like, um, like there's two major features that we want to be adding, two major features. Well, actually there's one major feature that we're adding and one little tweak and today we're going to do the tweak. The tweak is going to be about um, the AI um behaving like doing pathfinding correctly because right now it's doing pathfinding but it's not the best pathfinding in the world and we want to improve the second thing that's going to be the major feature that's still missing is um items you know um all of the picking up items using items eating items <laughs> all of the items stuff uh, but uh you know that's maybe something for the future but today just we want to just be uh, fixing the um, the pathfinding. What do I mean with pathfinding? First of all, let's let's just like talk about this real quick. So I have a, like a good testing testing situation. So look at at this little, little fellow here. So he can see us and he wants to get us, but he can't get us because he wants to always go near. He wants to go towards us, and he doesn't quite know why. He, he kind of like all of the spaces that he um, around him, the spaces that um, that are um, like as the crow flies the nearest to us, uh, they lead him into like this, this pocket area where and he cannot get out of. And the only way for him to actually catch us is for him to actually go away from us, actually increase the distance to us um, until he gets around the corner and then he, he would be able to get us. So obviously this, this uh, pathfinding situation is not it's not ideal. It's not ideal, let's say. It's um, it's not smart enough to, to deal with the situation. So we're gonna do like a real pathfinding algorithm. And funny enough, like we did some discussion about this in Discord and people were asking, oh, what kind of pathfinding algorithm I'm gonna use? I don't know, it's the one that works. <laughs> uh, I tried to like figure out which, like my path for, um, pathfinding algorithm, which of the different categories it belongs to. And I figured out like the pathfinding, Pathfinding is very badly documented, or at least like good resources are not really well good to find. Uh, and they m made th make things uh, sound a lot more complicated than they are. Um, so yeah, I cannot, sadly, I cannot really tell you what kind of pathfinding algorithm I'm going to use. I'm, it's, it's just going to be the one that works, basically. So before we begin, I wanted to actually fix a little issue uh, or let's uh, tweak a little issue. And that is going to be, where is that? Where are we setting the the blank map there we go we want to set the blank map so we can like see what's happening so we can see you know the characters moving and you can see like he's like, always moving between two uh two tiles because he wants tries to like this guy tries to get like through this corner but he can't and he doesn't understand that he has to go all the way around okay so here is how our pathfinding function will work let us say for the sake of argument that this, this here, let's let's go with this guy here. This is where we want to be going. Let's go, let's go like this. Okay, so this red tile, can we like fill, just fill? That would be good. This red tile is where we're going. This is our destination. And we get, we're gonna say that this yellow tile, and hopefully this is this is visible. This yellow tile is gonna be where we're coming from. And then we're gonna give our little duty here, we're gonna give him like an obstacle, something like this. So how are we gonna, like basically we want what we want to be doing, we kind of wanna kind of like have the path that goes around. We don't wanna give him to go directly straight and then, you know, get caught in here because that's what's happening. He starts here, goes straight to for the goal 
and then um, because that's kind of like you know what how you, he can reduce the distance from his current position to where he will be going where he wants to be going um he has goes he goes straight into the, the target then arrives here and realizes oh he actually cannot reduce the distance anymore and then he goes like back and forth between those two tiles uh, because there's no good choices anymore so what he has to do is now actually he has to go up at some point around and down and here something like this um, how are is the um, how, how can the, the the our our AI character figure this out? Well, again, there's like different solutions for this, but generally, like we have a really small, um, really, really small environment. We don't really have that many tiles to work with, so um, something we can do is we can uh, basically cr create like a little map for our for our friend. We're gonna create a map for him to kind of like figure out, you know, what the best move at any given spot is. Because the best move at, uh, move at any given spot is not necessarily the one that reduces the distance as the crow flies, but instead one that is kind of like reduces the distance uh, in terms of steps it takes for uh, for him to reach his goal. That's not the same thing. The As a crow flies is not the same as the amount number of steps required. So in terms of sheer distance, this point is closer than this, right? This point is almost there, this point is further away. But in terms of steps required, this point, you know, you have to go this, 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 like this. And here you're kind of like already halfway down that path. So how do we calculate a kind of like a map that tells us, you know, how many steps we still need until we reach our goal? That's kind of like seems like a very complicated thing. Like we just want to have the next step. Why do we have to create a whole map for this? That seems like insane. Um, that seems like it's more difficult than, than what, what, what we started out with. But actually, it's very easy to create a map that helps us, you know, let it, that calculates the distances to the target. We're basically going to make a uh, function and similarly like we had did like the, the fog uh, situation where we had like a second array, like a two-dimensional array that was kind of like laid on top of our map that told us which tile is in fog or not. We're going to have like a, another kind of um, array like this that will just save a number and that number is how far away this specific tile any, any like all of the tiles are away f from a target that we f specify uh, in steps and again that seems like complicated but it's actually not because for certain tiles you know, when you go when you when you start with a blank canvas like this for certain tiles you can already tell how far you're away from the target right like telling how far you're away from the target here might be difficult like starting, starting trying to try to calculate this tile in terms of how far this is away from the target, is gonna be tough. There's like a lot of things we have to consider, but figuring out how far this tile away is from the target, easy peasy. It's just right there. It's just right next to it, right? And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna first calculate the obvious ones. So let's let's do this manually. So we're gonna calculate. We're gonna put. Uh, can I? Oh, that's gonna be tough. Okay. So we know that there's one here. Oh Jesus. Um, there is a one here. Oh, that's very, un very ungood. I'm gonna actually probably draw it with a mouse. One here, right? D like this is this is the beginning of our map. We know that the, those tiles around our target are all one step away from the target. All the other ones kind of difficult. So once we're done with that, we kind of like can look at this again and be like, wait a minute. Some tiles are kind of obvious, right? So for example, again, we still don't know about this one, but these are like, okay, they're right next to the ones. So they, they must be the twos, right? Like all of these must be the twos. All right, and our map is suddenly getting a, a lot more complex. So suddenly we're like, okay, okay, so we filled up some of these tiles. Still don't know about this part here. Still don't know how far this is away. But again, we already see kind of like you already can maybe tell also where this is going, where we can tell like this is next to a two, so this must be three. This is next to a two, so this must be three and so forth. Right, we always filling in the tiles that are right next to a tile that we already know the distance of. And so far we go through this entire sequence until we arrive at a, like a, like a map full of numbers and each at each given spot this number tells you how far you're away from the target 
And what we, our little dude then can do is use this map as a guidance. And if it's, he's at any given spot, he, will, he can look at all of the neighboring tiles and pick that tile that will reduce his actual distance from, a de from the target. In distance, not in like the crow flies, no like the straight distance, but distance in terms of steps. He will try to reduce the number of steps to, to his target. That's basically how what we're gonna do. And again, I'm, I have no idea which of the algorithms that is, but they kind of all do the same thing, if you think about it. Like if you go through all of the tutorials and descriptions, they're all very similar. There are some exceptions, obviously, but they're all similar in that way where they kind of like going uh, through some kind of way through all of the tiles on the map and trying to assign them values, kind of like trying to figure out what happens. The, the, mainly the, the big differences uh, from what I can tell is how they go about it, you know, what, what the sequence is of how they're going to search. Because if you have like a really, really big map, like in, you know, StarCraft or whatever, you don't want to like go through the entire map and scan the entire map, you know, every tile, you have like hundreds of tiles, you don't want to like hundreds of thousands of tiles, you don't want to scan all of them in order to just like go a couple of steps, you know, that seems like overkill. So then you have to have like really smart algorithms that make sure that they only check those tiles that are most likely to be along the way to your goal. So you don't have to calculate distances from tiles that are kind of completely on the other side of the map. And that there's like there's like algorithms that can like can can deal with that, but in our case we don't have to deal with all this stuff. We have a very tiny map, and there's no way we're gonna like max out any kind of like processing power. We can calculate, uh, you know, the entire map like this in a snap of a second. It's gonna be no problem. Cool. Is that understandable? I hope it is. If it it's, if it isn't, let me know in the comment section. All right, so the same way, the way we have the fog here, we can also have a distance map. I'm not sure if I'm gonna define it here though. It's technically not, not necessary because anytime we, uh, we address it, the distance map, we are actually have done a distance calculation there. So I'm not sure if it's actually necessary. Um, if we're gonna keep it in the, the gameplay, but mm, the gameplay is getting kind of big, but it's kind of like part of a line of sight a little bit. Let's just keep it, keep it like this. I'm gonna call it um, do or, or calc dist, calculate distance. And then we're gonna go target x target y. That's gonna be our function. It will just calculate the distance. It will calculate the distance map for a given target. And l look at how, what we're doing here. We're not actually specifying, oh, wait a minute, I have to switch around, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> I always forget that. We don't specify a starting position. We do not specify a starting position. We just specify a distance, like a target, like a finish line. And then we fill the entire map with values. And that gives anybody, anybody, uh, guidance on, on you know how where to go and that's really neat for example if we say like at the beginning of the AI function where we know there's going to be a bunch of characters that will require guidance towards the target towards the player we can just like calculate the map once and all of our AI characters can use the same map to find their way to, to our um, player character. Uh, actually, that won't work because each of the, our AI characters has their own target position. Never mind, it will be fine. It's still like very efficient to, um, it's very fast to calculate, cal calculate this map. Good, okay, so we have to calculate distance. So first we're gonna, um, we're gonna make it so that this um, this array that we're talking about, this distance array, that's gonna be a global variable, that's gonna be a global array even, that's gonna be available from everywhere outside. Um, we're gonna call it dist. And we're gonna set it to a blank map of minus one. Minus one, in our case, will be the, um, I, it, I didn't find it, it's, it's empty, no value assigned. Um, why minus one? Uh, well, because like all of the other values are going to be either positive, which means you know there is a couple of there are a couple of steps steps away from the target, or they're going to be zero, and zero is obviously uh, you know the target. If you are at the target, the number of steps required to get to the target are zero. That's what you're trying to get at to the zero. So far, 
so good. Okay, so, <clears throat> so I'm gonna write this from scratch. I'm not sure if this is gonna be efficient, but we're gonna see what happens. So um, if we look at this again, so what we, how, how we went about filling this in is we always looked if there is a tile nearby that had a number um, and, um, and if there was a, uh, you know, if there was a number nearby would increase that number by one and just put it in each tile. We can, you could do that, but um, um, like looking at the, all the neighboring tiles from each tile, that's going to be like very cumbersome. Like there's, there's, that's going to actually take a little more time. I think an easier time is to every time we draw a number in one of those tiles, every time we draw an actual number. So let's say I draw a four in here, right? I drew a four in this tile. So I drew a tile in here. This is the tile we just drew in. If we do that, then we're gonna also kind of, what we wanna be doing is like, we're gonna put, um, remember, or, or like put a number of tiles around this tile that we just filled with a number as potential candidates of filling the next number for the next time we go go through this. So now we're gonna say like, okay, next time around, we should check about this one, and about this one, and about this one, and about this one. Now, obviously we can skip the last two ones. The threes are, have already number filled in, so we can just like remove them, it's fine. But the next ones, we're gonna get the next higher number, basically. We know that this is gonna be candidates for for the next time we go through the entire map again and kind of like fill in the next bigger number. So that's basically our idea. We're gonna have like this candidate list that we're gonna build up uh, and we go through the entire map. We're gonna deal with all of the candidates from the last time, basically, create a new candidates list and then, you know, repeat this entire process and go through all of the candidates we just created again and creating new candidates and then going through those new candidates again and creating even newer candidates and so forth. Just keep going like, uh, like through this uh, over and over again. Some people might be asking at this point, um, because again, it's like, like this kind of like weird obsession in computer science, I don't understand it. Um, uh, we could do it, yes, we could do this recursively. Yes, you could absolutely do it recursively. I don't know why you would though. I, it seems, I, if you think, like if you have a good example of this and you save maybe a bunch of tokens by this, then show me the code, I will look over it. But um, I, I have like bad experiences doing um, recursive programming with Pico8 because I, quite often I ran out of memory. And I'm probably, it was my fault, probably it wasn't Pico8's fault. Um, but I'm kind of like, I'm very nervous about these kind of like self-escalating systems. Um, so just for you guys to understand, so a recursive system or recursive uh, function is a function that calls itself. So you kind of have a copy that a function that calls a function that calls a function that calls a function that calls a function and so forth and so forth. And so, yeah, and that's kind of neat because you kind of like have this little function that unfolds itself into millions of functions. Um, but again, it's kind of like a weird obsession for computer science. I don't know why they kind of like, I still don't know why this is so much better than just writing it normally. Okay, so back to, back to, back from me bashing computer science as a, as a complete do, doofus that I am. Um, so we're gonna have like this list of candidates. I'm gonna call it CAND. These are candidates that we're going through. So we do, we're gonna do something like add, maybe something like add canned. We're gonna add a new entry in this list and that's gonna be x equals tx, y equals ty. We're gonna add like the starting candidate and the starting candidate is gonna be our destination. Another thing that we're gonna go add is step. That's kind of how many steps are required to get to the current iteration of, of going through the candidates. And we're gonna start with zero. So at the beginning we're gonna add, we're gonna have like just zero. Now, um, here is where we're gonna go for C in all can't do. We're going loop through all of the candidates. And then we're gonna go like, um, okay, so here's where we actually have to like think about, you know, how to structure this. Uh, let me think about this a little bit. All right, so we do something like, uh, first we're gonna set the, um, the map on the distance. So we're gonna go something like, I mean, we're gonna set the number of steps on our distance map. So we're gonna go like dist. Let me see, how did I do it last time around? 
Ah, we're gonna figure it out. Dist. Um, now the position of the of the distance. So it's gonna be like um, the position of the distance map. So it's gonna be like our candidate and the x position of our candidate and c dot y, the y position of our candidate. And that that thing we're gonna set to um, to step step. So at the beginning step is going to be zero. So at the beginning there's going to be just one entry in our candidate list, and that's, that entry is going to be the starting position. And now what we're going to have to do is going to be going to go for d equals one to four do. We are looking through all of the neighboring tiles, right? And so we're going to go like something like d um, local local. That's right. Really nice. Dx. Um, let's start with dx equals um, c dot x plus um, and now comes our, again, we're gonna use this so often, it's gonna be crazy. It, this array here, we're gonna use that one and we're gonna plug it in here and then uh, D. I'm gonna write it out um, a bit more verbose right now and then I'm gonna put everything into individual lines um, because I think this is a bit, right now it's a bit easier to, to reach. So we'll figure out DX and DY. At this point, we might think, be thinking about maybe maybe turning the CX into its own variable. I'm not sure if we're going to actually save, save um, tokens like this. Let's see, 2359. So let's go local CX CY equals CX comma CY. And then go and go CX CY. Is that, is that better? It is not better. Bumsky. Yeah, it's not better. Okay. Good. All right. So, um, uh, dear X. So we now figured out. We are figuring out coordinates of um, tiles around it. And now we just want to make sure if those tiles are walkable, and if they don't have a number on them in the distance map associated with them, and if, of course, if they're in bounds, then we're going to add those. Um, uh, free spaces around the place we just created. We're going to add those to our uh, distance map. So something like if in bounds dx dy, just making sure if we were in bounds for now, and um, dist dx dy equals minus one. So, you know, there is no distance associated, associated with it yet. And is walkable um, dx dy. Um, then we have to add a mode. Um, we're not going to do any mode yet. We're going to think about this later on. And we're just going to leave it at uh, default mode. Um, later on, um, it, we kind of think, think about it. We actually might want to be able to choose the mode um, of how we want to do the uh, um, the, the pathfinding. Okay, so if it's walkable, then end. So in this case, we're going to add this to our queue. Now here comes a little bit of, a, a little bit of an issue. Because we cannot add it to the same queue, to the same, same candidate list um, that we are actually going through right now, because that would like get the individual steps mixed up with each other. Because you know we are currently adding step number one, and if we're gonna get, or we're adding these things that should become step number one, but currently step is zero. So we're gonna get like get, gonna get those like the different steps confused with each other if we. Um, if we add candidates to the same list of candidates that we are going through right now. So we actually want to be doing is actually we want to be having a canned to or canned new. Let's call it a canned new, new candidates list. And we're going to add that to the candid new candidates list. By the way, I forgot a uh, parentheses here. Christian. Mm, so yeah. So dx and dy, like so. So we added this to the candidates list. Um, 
and that's it. So the only thing that we have to do is going to repeat this. Oh no! When we are through with all of the candidates, one more, one important thing, we're going to make sure that canned equals canned new. So the new list of candidates that we just created, we're going to assign it to the to the to the one that we're going to be going through. So there's like two lists of candidates, the one that we're going through right now and the one that we're going to be going through next. And then at the end, when we went through all of the that we're going through right now, we're switching it. Or like we are assigning the new ones um, to, to the current ones. All that we need to do right now is just make sure that we're doing it multiple times. So it's going to be, um, we're going to do this with, um, with a new type of loop. It's going to be a repeat until loop. Repeat. It's um, there's like different types of loops. I, I think we never discussed the repeat kind of loop. Maybe we did. It's basically it's, the loop starts here and goes through all of the stuff, and then we're gonna go until, and we're gonna go canned uh, equals zero. So we're gonna repeat this process until the the there is no more candidates for us to like if, until we went through this process, and we haven't actually added new candidates to our list. And in this case, we must have filled the entire board and all of the neighbors of, we must have filled all of the neighbors of um, of walkable tiles that had numbers in them. So there is no way, like all of the other tiles that, that don't have any numbers in them, they are actually not accessible from the current location that we are at. Okay. And that's it. That is going to be basically it. I don't think there is anything. Is there something that we need to do? Oh, yeah, there is something very important that we need to do. And that's going to be here. Step plus equals one. We will have to add one to the stat, obviously. Uh, yeah. We could put this down here, but no, that's good. We're going to make this. We're going to do a small tweak to this because it's not exactly the way I want it uh, later on. But for now, I'm I'm nervous as always. I'm a nervous kind of person. Let's see if this even works. So um, let's calculate this. Uh, I'm gonna put it like right at the beginning. After I'm gonna go calc dist. I'm gonna go p um, p uh, p mob dot x p mob dot y. First, let's see if there's any gonna be any bug. There is no bug. Oh, but this is oh this is happening. What is this? Return dist. Ah, I think um, our dist um, array has collided with our dist um, function. So let's call this dist map. So it's a map of distances, obviously. Um, and uh, like so. Just making sure that the dist map is. Square brackets, yep, it's two square brackets, it's good. Let's try that now. Okay, so I guess it works, but we don't see it working. So something we can do here is we, in our draw function, we're gonna draw this distance map onto the screen. We're just gonna draw those contents and we're gonna see if if that worked correctly. I just wanna see if it, it worked correctly. Um, we can do something like, um, we're gonna see, use basically the same function that we use for drawing the fog. And we're gonna go dist map. And then uh, if this map is greater than greater than greater equals zero. Uh, and let's like we at certain amount of steps we okay, or, again and let's let's just draw it for now. I just want to see something. I'm just like not I'm not, not gonna overthink it right now. I'm just gonna go print. Uh, wait, I did delete it too much. Uh, print. Hmm, not what I wanted. Print. Uh, dist map x y, uh, and I'm gonna put it at x times eight, y times eight, and the color is gonna be red. So let's see how that works. So you see, we have our distance map here, and as you can see, it's kind of like it seems to be working all right. Yes, 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 everything is nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can see uh, our our little friend, our little slime friend, will be sitting, if we plug this into his AI, he will be sitting at spot number 14. And from that spot, 
he can easily go to 13, 12, uh, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and so forth, and he will arrive at the current position of my player. That's cool. That's cool. I like it. So now we can also kind of like maybe see this in action. That would be kind of also nice. Uh, let's do this. Calc this. And we're going to put this in our update. Um, yeah, I'll do this right here. So you can see how the numbers are changing as I move around. And it's going to be interesting when I open a door where suddenly, you know, a new part of the map has kind of opened up for our distance calculation. That's the gist of it, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's the idea. I wonder why it it works so slowly. I guess, oh, because I calculate distance every time, uh, every frame. So so let's let's do it like this. It should be, yeah, this is a lot smoother. Okay, so this is this is basically the idea here. So we got this this um, figured out. There's one little tweak I want to be doing because I noticed it's actually helpful for. It's it's actually helpful for um, procedural generation, um, and that's going to be um, when we go back to here. So you notice that it only fills in spots that are walkable, which is good. That's exactly what we want. We want to then we want this only to take pay, pay attention to the spots that are walkable, technically. But, however. Uh, later on, in during the um, during the uh, procedural generation, we might be, want to have a, a like a check for oh is you know we want want to like uh, drill a hole in a wall at a certain position you know at a certain distance to a certain location. For example, we might be drilling a hole to put the stairs in them, like the final stairs, and it should be as far as, as away from the starting point as possible. Um, in this case, we're actually also going to use a dist map now. That means, it, but we kind of have to check uh, the dist map for a position that is not in a walkable spot. It's inside a wall, but it's next to a walkable spot. Um, so I want to tweak this position so it will kind of like calculate the distance one tile into a wall, but just one tile into a wall, not any any step further. So like if you're into this wall, in, in inside this wall, you will have a way out, so to speak. That's my idea here. And so the way I'm going to do this is we kind of have to tweak this a little bit, this, this function here a little bit. So instead of um, adding new um, new things to the, to the candidates list, we kind of want to set the step when we find new candidates. Let me explain real quick what I mean. So basically this step here where we set um, the actual number inside our distance map, this part is not when we are actually going through the list of candidates, but where we adding those candidates to the, to the list here. Adding new candidates to the list. Here's where we're doing this. And that also means that at the beginning, we kind of have to add uh, like a first candidate basically. Um, yeah. Uh, it's going to be zero and we can add this here plus one we add this here like so okay and that will what actually change anything if we run this it, it's still the same thing actually we had a bit of an issue there look there's some things that are not taken care of there's two steps that, that have been skipped how peculiar why did why were they skipped? And also why is it not being updated? That's weird. Ah, got it. Got it. It's gotta be like this. Yeah, now it works. So um it's uh, did I did I comment something out? Is that is that I, I wanna go oh yeah I I, I returned it. Uh, I let me keep this around. I think it's good to keep it around for now. It just it around for now so we can see this change yeah i want to see this change okay good okay so now um I, we want to kind of like again we're going to search one tile into the wall so what we're going to do here um is and um, this part here where we're adding new candidates to our list uh, we're gonna add those candidates 
only if the tile is walkable, but otherwise we still set the um, we still set the the value. So we we're gonna do something like this. We're setting the dist map, but we only add the new candidate if if this is, was a free spot. Don't get too confused by this. If you're like, oh, wait a minute, I, why why am I doing this? This 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 will have a payoff later on when we do the procedural generation. But now you can see like we search one tile into the wall, but just one tile. Anyways, it's kind of difficult to explain maybe um, and to elaborate exactly why we're doing this. It, I think it should become very clear once we get to procedural generation and start using this to actually um, um, place you know important elements of the level geometry. Uh, it, it's kind of like it helps having like a fuller picture or uh, of the distance uh, of a certain tile to a certain position, even though that posi certain position might not be uh, completely walkable. So just so, so we can see what happened if it was walkable. That's kind of like the whole idea. Oh man, it's kind of difficult to explain. Good. So this part is done. So all that is left to do. We kind of have to hook this up into our... Um, into our navigation system. So let's see if we can pull this off. First of all, I want to now remove. Um, I want to remove our draw function thing. That's that's done for. We we finished here. We finished here, ladies and gentlemen. And then I want to use this dist map calculation. I'm going to grab this out, and I'm going to put this in UI. Uh, AI, I mean. Okay, so here is walkable. And so here we are checking the neighboring tiles, right? If it's walkable, then check mobs, then... Oh yeah, by the way, that's something that we haven't considered yet. Um, let me think about this. Yeah, we haven't considered this yet. Um, so it would be good to for this dist map function to consider other mobs. Let's just ignore it for a while. I just want to just plug it in. This episode is already pretty long and just want to make it sure it works. So this is where we are um, looking for, for candidates. This is where we calculate the distance, right? This is where we calculate the distance between um, between all the positions around the character, around the uh, uh, monster and make him pick the best position. Mm -hmm. So instead of the dist here, we are going to be using the dist map. Like so, it's super easy. And then the target, this is going to be, oh, oh, this is, so this comes up in here. We're going to do this. We, no, actually, no, not the txty. No, that's wrong. This part, txty is correct. And this part is uh, the destination of our, our, our dist map. So we're going to go calc dist here, over here. Um, was it calc dist? I always forget the name. Calc dist, yeah, that's fine. Calc dist uh, like this. Let's put it after our local definitions. Okay, so uh, every time our, our one of our dudes, or one of our monsters is moving, he calculates the distance to his target. Like he makes a map of, you know, w which tiles are how far away from from his target. And then he uses this dist map um, to, to judge, you know, the neighboring tiles and see which of those tiles is good or bad and then he does his walk. And you can see you can see that they found their way out of this little nook now. There is a bit of an issue. There is a bit of an issue. Have you seen a little bit so some of the behavior? You see that? That's not good. So the behavior is entirely predictable now from the enemies. They will always go sideways first and then they will go up and down. And in a situation like this, it's kind of like we're kind of like in stalemates kind of situation where he won't come closer to me and I won't closer to him. And so it's like we're just like dancing like this forever. 
and there's no oh, no way for us to resolve the situation. So it would be nice if there was a kind of way to resolve the stalemate, stalemate and if our characters actually chose um, pref um, chose randomly um, their next step if there is um, two equal valid position because that's basically the problem here. Uh, did I delete it? I did delete it because then I could show you the problem here. The problem here is that he can go closer or he can go left or right and both of these are equally as valid. So going left and right makes him go get closer to me as much as uh, going down and uh, he will always prefer going left and right and why is that well because we're using this we're using this dear x and dear y thing and those start with left and right and like so the first entries in this array are left and right and then up and down and so where we looping when we're looping through all this array here when we're using using this array to look at, at the neighboring tiles we first look at the tiles next next to the um, to the uh, character and those will become their best choices and then looking up and down we will find choices that are equally as good but by this point we uh, you know we don't care because we already found a good choice and that's going to be left and right so that's why our character prefers going left and right very elaborate explanation but we're going to deal with tweaking that maybe in the next episode it's not going to be that difficult but also it's going to be maybe go a little bit into gameplay oh and by the way there is like those t-shirts here there should be if everything goes right there should be like a link in a doobly doo where you can get this t-shirt and also like the token limit a cool token limit t-shirt so if you want to get those t-shirts then grab them downstairs it does help um, this channel see you next time around guys bye bye